It has been difficult for the public to grasp the significance of global warming because the early symptoms, at least those most reported, have been mild, thus distracting from the gravity of its long-term consequences. Many scientists and science writers have recently decided to focus on weather and climate-related extreme events as, quote, teachable moments to illustrate the importance and immediacy of human-induced climate change. In our opinion, there's another teachable topic that should be used to educate the public about the long-term consequences of climate change, the cumulative damage to ecological processes, which has been slowly changing the North American landscape for more than a century. This includes large-scale shifts in the ranges of species, the timing of seasons, and of animal migrations. The Space Coast Climate Change Initiative has assembled a few regrettably remarkable examples to illustrate the damage to North American ecology already attributed to climate change, well-documented changes to plants and animals that clearly indicate climate change is real, happening now, and at an astonishing pace. April temperatures in Concord, Massachusetts, just west of Boston, have been steadily rising over the past 150 years, in large part a consequence of global warming. Based upon an analysis of historical data sets and contemporary observations, scientists were able to demonstrate unambiguously that the plants in Concord, on average, are now flowering 10 days earlier than they were in the 1850s. In addition, they concluded that 27% of the species recorded in Concord more than 100 years ago were no longer present, and an additional 36% of formerly common species were now rare. What could account for this loss in species? The results indicate that climate change is not only changing the phenology of plant communities, that is, changing the timing of seasonal biological events like flowering or leafing, but it is also affecting the abundance and composition of Concord's flora. After comparing field notes and observations, scientists working in the Rocky Mountains acknowledged a large and growing body of evidence indicating global climate change was altering the region's ecology. To establish a better understanding of the magnitude and extent of ecological change, they initiated a variety of field studies. In 2009, for example, Grand Teton National Park biologists, in collaboration with Yellowstone National Park and Teton Science Schools, launched an investigation of the American pika. The American pika is a small, hamster-looking animal, which occurs commonly in rocky taluses and slopes along the Rocky Mountains. It was selected as an indicator species for evaluating the effects of climate change in western North America because of its sensitivity to temperature. In addition to being climate sentinels, like the canary in the coal mine, pikas are an important source of food for an array of alpine animals. The scientists looked at records which spanned more than a hundred years. These records show seven of the original 25 pika populations have vanished during the last century. The scientists recorded warmer temperatures and less precipitation at sites where extinctions occurred relative to those sites where the pika are thriving. Furthermore, local extinction rates of the American pika have increased nearly five-fold in the last 10 years. In Yosemite National Park, researchers also found that pika populations, dependent on cool, high mountain habitats, are moving up mountain slopes in response to a warming climate. This upslope migration is currently saving the pika from local extinction, but they may eventually run out of real estate or reach an elevation limit beyond which they cannot pass. What then? Recently developed habitat models predict that pikas may disappear from over 80% of their current range by the turn of the century in response to rising temperatures and climate change. Our next example is the butterfly. Many species of butterfly in the United States are shifting their ranges northward 
and to higher elevations to avoid a warming climate. A study of Edith's checkerspot butterfly showed that 40% of the populations below 2,400 feet have gone extinct, despite the availability of otherwise suitable habitat and food supply. The checkerspot's most southern populations also have gone extinct, while new populations have been established north of the previous northern boundary for the species. This map shows the response of Edith's checkerspot butterfly populations to a warming climate over the last 136 years in the American West. Over 70% of the southernmost populations, shown in yellow, have gone extinct. The northernmost populations and those above 8,000 feet elevation in the cooler climate of California's Sierra Nevadas, shown in green, are still thriving with extinction rates less than 20 percent. However, a warming climate has still resulted in an average extinction rate of between 35 and 55 percent as shown in dark gray. Because butterfly populations are slow to migrate into new, more suitable habitat, most species are not expected to keep up with the rapid pace of climate change projected in the coming decades. Across western North America, from Mexico to Alaska, conifer, or pine forest die-off, is occurring on an extraordinary scale and unprecedented rate during the past 150 years. The Rocky Mountains of Canada and the United States have lost nearly 70,000 square miles of forest, an area the size of Washington State since the year 2000. This massive die-off is being caused by outbreaks of the tree-killing bark beetle, an insect about the size of a grain of rice, killing pines from the American Southwest, like the pinyon pine, to the spruce and fir of mountainous areas further north. According to scientists, these large-scale forest deaths from beetle infestations are a symptom of warming temperatures and increased stress due to a changing climate. Bark beetle infestations have been big news for the last 15 years in the western United States, with entire mountainsides of conifers, including lodgepole pine and spruce, dead, dying, and brown, amongst otherwise healthy green forests. Climate change inherently favors invasive pests. Milder winters have reduced the death rate of beetle larvae. On the other hand, hot summer weather and droughts have made trees weaker and less able to fight off the beetles. Furthermore, colder temperatures once kept the beetles away from high altitudes, yet now they swarm and kill trees on the highest mountaintops. The white bark pine, once largely protected from the beetles because it grew at high altitudes and was shielded by cold, is now functionally extinct. And to make matters worse, the beetles have taken a crucial terrestrial system that had absorbed carbon dioxide, known as a carbon sink, and turned it into a carbon source as dead and decaying trees release carbon dioxide into the world atmosphere. Over the next decade, scientists have suggested that the beetle-killed forests of British Columbia will emit 250 million metric tons of carbon dioxide, the equivalent of five years of car and light truck emissions in the country of Canada. Tree-killing bugs aren't the only problem. In 2005, Colorado researchers noticed that aspens were suddenly dying in large numbers. That year they found 30,000 acres of dead aspen forests. The next year there were 150,000 acres, and in 2008 it had soared to 553,000 acres. The die-off is called Sudden Aspen Death, or SAD. Trees at low elevations and facing south are dying the fastest, and scientists believe the cause is hotter temperatures and drier weather. The loss of the aspen trees is a blow to many other species that find food and refuge in their groves. This climate-induced die-off of aspen trees in North America dispels a common myth that rising levels of CO2 the cause of global warming and climate change, will be good for all vegetation. Unfortunately, those higher levels of CO2 are accompanied by higher temperatures and 
in many places, drought and bark beetle infestation. What gives researchers even greater cause for concern is that many of these large aspen die-offs have occurred with minimal warming. In the West, for example, the average temperature has warmed about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit over the last century. What happens if the temperature continues to rise, as is now predicted by most climatologists who model such things? As a consequence of more than a century of climate change in North America, the life-sustaining overlap of habitat, range, and synchronized seasonal migration patterns of the predator and its prey, or of pollen and the pollinator, has been unraveling. In addition to those we described in this short video, many other species have been responding to changes in local temperature or rainfall cues independent of others on which they depend upon for food and shelter. The mismatch in the timing of ecological events has led to local extinctions and a dramatic rise in insect pests, disease pathogens, and invasive species. Yes, anthropogenic global warming or climate change, call it what you like, it is altering the world around us and will continue to do so until we unite around solutions to slow and ultimately alter our current course and unfortunate destiny with disaster. Impacts of Climate Change on North American Biology Part 1 Examples from the Mid-19th Century to Present Produced by the Space Coast Climate Change Initiative, Melbourne, Florida Research credits, references, and links to relevant websites are listed in the YouTube description of this video for announcements of new videos and news like our Facebook page.